Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial guys, we are going to be tackling question 2.1, question 2.2 as well as question 2.3. So in question 2.1 guys, we are basically going to be analyzing um, a floor plan um, that is given to us, right? And we're going to be using um, this floor plan to answer questions that are given to us, okay? In question 2.2, guys, we're going to be using a um, tree diagram to help us answer questions that are given to us. So question 2.2, guys, deals with probability, right? We'll be using um, um, a tree diagram to answer questions that are given to us, right? And we're also going to be um, calculating probability. And we're also going to be looking at question 2.3, where we're basically given a roadmap, right? We're going to be answering questions uh, based on this roadmap that is given to us. Okay, before we get started with today's video tutorial, guys, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload a new video tutorial, guys. And also, please don't forget to, to give all these video tutorial guys a huge thumbs up if you really appreciate the content, right? Um, that I'm bringing to you guys, and you want this content to reach a wider audience, please make sure that you click on that like button and you also if it and if you also want to support this channel and you want to help the channel improve in terms of the quality please consider being a part of the maths gang okay so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial Like I mentioned, to, um, guys, in today's video tutorial, we're going to be having a look at question 2.1, question 2.2, as well as question 2.3. Okay, in question 2.1, guys, we're just going to be analyzing this um, floor plan of a restaurant that is given to us to help us answer questions that are given to us, right? In question 2.2, we're going to be using this tree diagram. Um, to answer probability questions and in question 2.3 we're going to just be using this roadmap to help us answer questions that are given to us okay so let's get started question 2.1 it says an extra a shows a restaurant's um seating plan for customers okay use the information on an extra a to answer the questions that follow so we need to use the information that is given to us here on an extra a to answer the questions that are given to us, okay? Question 2.1.1. Give one possible reason why this restaurant has so many windows, okay? So before we can even answer this question, guys, we have to analyze this floor plan and see what exactly um, is given to us, right? So like, um, so this is basically a seating plan of um, a restaurant, okay? Um, and we're given a key here, okay? So let's have a look at the key that is given to us there, right? So we are told that, the windows okay if we see um a key that looks like that so that symbol um where it's like a smaller window right that just shows that in dealing with small windows then when we have like a more like your bigger windows right we've got that bigger rectangle with the um bigger squares there that um basically indicates your uh, medium windows okay so we see that that's a window that's a window right that's also still a window that is a window that is a window that is a window okay so that is a window so there right here along your walls okay we have um our windows all right then we've got um the key here for a chair for one chair then you've got the key for a couch and then you've got the key for the old, um covered stoop so here guys we've got our covered stoop um this is our couches right and the um and this is our um single chairs okay right we are also told to note the main entrance door the main entrance doors are on the south side of the building so here guys um if you can see we're not really given like a compass where we are told that okay this is actually the north okay but we are given this very important um information here right we are told that okay the main entrance doors are on the south side of the building so if we can find where the main entrance door is then we will be able to know where the south side 
of the building is okay so where is the main entrance door we said oh there is our main entrance door right meaning that this is the south side of the building okay so i'm just gonna put an s there so we don't forget okay this basically means that here okay that is the south side of the building okay if that is the south side of the building then we already know guys i already explained this in the previous video tutorial we can just use if this is the south that means that the north is at the top naughty elephant sprays water okay already we've got our compass now just from that information that was given to us about the main entrance being at the south side of the building okay so we're also given the storeroom the kitchen the restrooms the different um tables um in this restaurant okay so i think that we're more than ready to answer the questions that are given to us it says give one possible reason why this restaurant has so many windows okay so this one okay you can just give any reason that makes sense okay maybe that restaurant wants to let um fresh air in okay so you'll find that maybe it has a lot of uh windows for ventilation purposes okay or you'll find that the restaurant has a lot of windows because um to let natural light in right or you'll find that um the restaurant has a lot of windows because maybe it's situated in a place that has amazing views okay so to accommodate um uh, to ensure that the customers um enjoy those views okay so you can give either one of those answers okay that maybe to let fresh air in or to um let, let natural light in or for customers to enjoy the view any of those reasons would be correct okay you just need to give one and that will just award you two marks okay so let's write that down okay so i'm gonna write to let natural light in all right and that's just going to award you two marks. Let's have a look at the next question. Question 2.1.2. It says, calculate the maximum number of chairs available for customers. Okay. So we just need to calculate or even count the maximum number of chairs that are available um, for customers. So here, guys, you need to be careful. You must not count the couches. They said chairs. Okay. So you need to basically have a look at um all the places where we've got a key that looks like that so where we've got those chairs right and count how many chairs we have in this restaurant okay and add them all up to get how many um chairs to get what is the maximum number of chairs that are available in this restaurant for their customers okay so just a quick way to do this right um i'm just going to say okay here you've got one two three okay so i'm going to say we've got um three tables that have four chairs so i'm going to say three times four okay then we've got one two three four five six okay plus six i'm just going to say plus six chairs guys i'm counting the chairs okay right then we've got one two three four so you've got four tables and and uh, and in each of these four tables we just have four chairs so i'm going to say plus four times four okay and then plus okay here you've got tables that just have three chairs so we've got one two three four five so i'm going to say plus three times five and then lastly plus um the two chairs here plus um the six chairs there okay right so that's basically how i'm gonna do my counting okay and i'm gonna punch these values into my calculator and that's gonna give me the maximum number of chairs available for customers in this restaurant okay so three times um four plus six plus four times four plus six plus two plus three times five right if you punch those values to your calculator you should get that the maximum number of chairs that are available for customers is 57 chairs all right and we are basically done let's have a look at the next question question 2.1.3 it says determine the number of seats directly facing the wall on the south side okay so we want to find the number of seats 
that are directly facing the wall on the south side, okay? So there's two ways in which this question, there are two answers that can be, um, that will be accepted here, right? Let's just have a look what's actually going on here, okay? So I made a silly mistake here, okay? It's naughty elephant sprays water. It was supposed to be W, but not an S, okay? But that should be fine, okay? So we want to find the number of seats directly facing the wall, okay? So another person might think that, okay, if they're saying directly facing the wall, that means that I need to count um, seats that are facing the wall directly without having anything, any other thing um obstacles along the way okay um so if this is the south wall right guys we already know that this is the south wall here yeah? we already know this is the, our our south wall so how many seats are directly facing that south wall okay if you count guys you'll see that you've got one two three four five six seats okay right i'm just hi um highlighting the whole um thing but we can also just do this so that you guys see right the seats that are directly facing the south wall is one two three four five six these seats are facing the south wall because we are told that guys this wall here is the south wall so those seats are facing the south wall okay that's the first answer that can um would be accepted right or you can say okay so question 2.1.3 so we can see that it's actually six um seats that are directly facing the south wall or right okay another answer that would be accepted okay is right we still have these six seats now one two three four five six seats that are directly facing the south okay six right then you've got seven it's directly facing the south eight directly facing the south nine directly facing the south ten directly facing the south eleven south ne? twelve it's directly facing the south and thirteen okay so those seats one two three one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen seats as well are also directly facing um the south wall okay right so you can either say thirteen or six okay so which one whichever one of those answers would be marked correct all right so let's write that down or oh, 13 okay so i'm just gonna write it's 13 seats that are directly facing the south wall all right let's have a look at the next question question 2.1.4 give one reason why the restaurant has couches at the entrance okay so you can basically answer this question based on what you also know maybe from going to wimpy um or, you know particular restaurants where you'll see that they'll have couches a spur right you'll see that they have a couch there um at the main entrance why do they have that couch there okay so you can say that okay maybe they have the couch there um based on your own experience right real world or uh, real life experience where you basically use that couch to wait for an order so you basically don't want to probably you don't want to go into uh, the restaurant and have your meal there right so you just uh, make your order sit on the couch and wait for your order okay so it could be uh, it's a waiting area for people that um or customers who, or who ordered uh, takeaways or another reason is that the couch is there because it's a waiting area for people waiting to be seated right you'll find that especially when you times when you go to uh maybe i'm going to say spur right and you get there and it's packed okay so now you sit there because uh, you sit there until one of the customers leave so that you can come in and um have your seats okay so either one of those reasons or any other valid reason would be accepted okay so you can either say that okay it's a waiting area for people waiting to be seated or you can even say it's a waiting area for customers who ordered takeaways okay so i'm going to use the reason that it's a waiting area for customers who ordered takeaways all right so it's a waiting area for customers who ordered um takeaways all right let's have a look at question 2.1.5 it says a person at table 18 leaves her seat and walks towards her friend at table four use table four she uses the arrow path 
shown on the seating plan. Use compass directions to describe her path from table 18 to table 4. Okay, so we're told that a person leaves her table, all right, um, here at table 18. So we see this is our table 18, and they basically want to go to table 4. We need to use compass uh, directions to basically give or to describe the path from table um 18 to table four right so already here guys i showed you how we get your naughty elephant sprays water okay based on the fact that we were told that this wall here is the south wall so if that is the south wall then we know that at the top we've got north and if at the top we've got north then you can just use um you move in a clockwise direction and then you say naughty elephant sprays water okay that's fine so what is the directions that you would give okay the first thing that we see you would move because they did they did say you need to use compass directions okay so you can't say from table 18 you need to turn right mm -mm. compass directions guys okay so that basically means that you need to move or walk in a easterly direction because when you move in that direction you're moving towards the east right then you move then you turn and you move uh, or you walk in a southerly direction so you walk in a southerly direction okay that is south all right and then you turn again and you walk in an easterly direction okay so those are the directions or campus direct compass directions that you would um use or give okay so we're gonna write that down okay so those are the compass directions that would basically describe her path okay so i'm gonna quickly write those down okay first thing you want to walk in an easterly direction okay then turn and walk in a southerly direction okay then you also turn again and walk in an easterly direction again okay so that is how you would basically uh, describe the path okay question 2.1.6 it says norma claims that there are less than okay 21 tables for customers in this restaurant you need to state with reason whether her claim is correct okay so unoma is basically saying that in this um restaurant right we've got tables right that are actually less than 21 okay the mouth is closed um towards um on the table side meaning that we've got less than 21 um tables okay so we need to basically um state with the reason whether her claim is valid so let us see okay so with this question right um the trick is that don't be fooled into thinking that oh well, okay i'm just going to see if i've got um 21 tables right at 21 on the table that technically means that i've just i have 21 tables okay don't be fooled literally count and check if there are actually 21 tables okay because you'll find that maybe one table has been removed okay so let's check to see if we actually have 21 tables okay so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve mm, okay so we've got a problem table number 13 is missing okay so 12 13 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so we see that in actuality, right, if you actually count all these tables um, in this restaurant, you only just have 20 tables and not 21 tables, even though we've got a 21 uh, there, right? And that basically means that you'll find that, uh, and that basically means that table number 13 was removed okay so we don't have 21 tables but in fact we do have less than um 21 tables okay because we saw that when you actually count um the tables right you'll see that table number 13 um has been left out or removed okay okay so we're gonna basically write that down 
question 2.1.6 okay um table number 13 is left out okay there are only 20 tables okay meaning that her claim is correct okay remember she claimed that right you've got tables that are less than 21 okay and we counted that we had 20 tables okay so therefore her claim is correct we do have less than um 21 tables all right and that is it guys for question 2.1 let us have a look at question 2.2 okay question 2.2 says an extra b shows the choices on the set menu for a function at the restaurant so we're still under the theme of this restaurant okay and then we said uh, we are told that customers can choose um one protein right the proteins that they can choose from is your chicken which stands which is your c the beef or the fish okay then they can choose one side order with the side order they can choose maybe a vegetable or a salad okay and then they can also choose um one dessert right so you can either choose if you've got if you want ice cream or malva a pudding okay so those are all the items or the choices um that customers can um choose from um in their menu okay use the information on a on a next b to answer the questions that follow question 2.2.1 name the type of diagram that is illustrated on a next b okay so if you have a look at a next b we are given this diagram okay that basically represents the choices from a set menu at um this restaurant okay and what type of a diagram is this okay guys and if you can remember this is actually a tree diagram okay we've got these branches yeah okay so that basically tells us that we are basically dealing with a tree diagram okay so we're just gonna write that down with the diagram that is illustrated on an extra b is a tree diagram all right let's have a look at question 2.2.2 okay it says write down the missing outcome at 2.2.2 a and the protein choice at 2.2.2 b so what is the missing outcome right okay so it's very important that you guys are aware of how you're supposed to analyze um this tr this uh tree diagram and how these branches are branching out okay right we've got here the three choices of proteins remember it's chicken it's beef right what is the last one here that we're told about right it's fish so we already know that for question 2.2.2 b right that is the missing value there it's supposed to be fish okay when analyzing this tree diagram to basically get your outcomes okay what do you guys need to know okay with your chicken you can either have your chicken with veggie or salad right and then here you've got the different desserts only two desserts that you can choose from okay so in the first choice right if you can you can either have a chicken with a veggie and ice cream that is the outcome or you can have a chicken with a veggie and marvel pudding that is the outcome all right the another choice you can have is that maybe you don't want veggies so you can have a chicken with a salad and you're going that way guys ice cream okay so you're branching out like that okay that is the outcome chicken salad with ice cream or you can have chicken with a salad still and marvel pudding right and that is that outcome there okay so that missing value there right is for your chicken and you move from your chicken to your salad to your malva right put it okay let me just highlight that proper okay from the chicken to the salad right going down to the malva pudding that is the outcome there okay so it's chicken salad malva pudding okay so it's c s M. that is the missing value there okay for question 2.2.2a it's csm for question 2.2.2b right the missing value there is your fish right your f because remember we were given three 
proteins um, that you could choose from. Okay, so the missing one is CSM, right? For question 2.2.2B, the missing outcome there is your oh, fish, your missing value is your fish, or you can even just write it as F. All right, let's have a look at question 2.2.3. State the number of combinations with beef as the protein okay so basically what this question is asking us right how many combinations do we have that have beef as a protein right so when you basically look at all these outcomes right here okay when you look at all these outcomes okay i'm gonna just write this as c s m we already know what that is right when you look at all these outcomes how many of them right or how many of these combinations right that we basically have have beef as um a protein okay we're not going to look at chicken okay because all these outcomes here right give us the combinations that you will get if you choose chicken as your protein okay but if you choose beef as your protein these are the different um combinations that you can get and how many of them do we see here guys we see one two three four okay because here is if you choose beef veggies and ice cream beef veggie and marble pudding beef salad and ice cream beef salad and marble pudding so those are the four different outcomes that you can get if you decide to choose beef as your protein so in total the number of outcomes there or number of combinations that have beef as a protein is just four okay let's write that down all right so it's four total combinations right let's have a look at the last question question 2.2.4 says determine as a percentage the probability of randomly selecting a meal with marvel pudding as a dessert okay so here guys we are calculating probabilities probability okay and what is the probability of randomly selecting a meal with marvel pudding as dessert okay remember guys we're calculating probability right what is the formula for calculating probability okay what is the formula that we discussed in paper one okay we discussed that when you want probability probability is equal to favorable outcomes right and i mentioned what does favorable mean okay favorable basically means that the outcomes that you want okay what is it that you want divided by the total outcomes okay what how many total values do we have okay in this um tree diagram okay so here what is our favorable outcomes the favorable outcomes what we want is selecting a meal with malva pudding right so we're gonna have to look at all these outcomes right that we have here right and find outcomes that have what malva pudding okay I'm just gonna put the c s m here guys don't make a mistake of forgetting that we have that missing value there we found what it was and it's c s M. okay so now from here we're gonna count all the possible of outcomes that have the malva pudding so where we have an m that's where we've got our malva pudding so we're gonna count all of those okay so it's one right two three four five and six okay so our favorable outcomes or the outcomes where we've got a malva pudding is six okay so we're gonna write that down divided by total outcomes in total right from this tree diagram right how many total outcomes do we have okay so we're gonna count one two three four guys five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so we've got a total of twelve outcomes right however guys they said what is the probability determine the probability as a percentage of selecting a meal with malva pudding as a dessert so from here we need to multiply that by 100 because we want what the probability is as a percentage this is the same as just saying right 1 over 12 
multiply by 100, 6 goes into itself once, goes into 12 twice. That is how it got to the half, right? And if you take a half and you multiply it by 100, you will see that the probability of selecting Marvel pudding as a choice of dessert is actually equal to 50%. All right, guys. And that is it for question 2.2. All right, let us have a look at question 2.3. All right, so question 2.3, uh, guys, I did mention that we're just going to be analyzing um, this root map um, and using it to answer questions that are given to us. So question 2.3 says, below is a simplified root map um, of the Los Angeles Marathon. So LAM is Los Angeles Marathon in the United States of America. The Los Angeles route is 26.2 uh, miles, okay? So this route is actually 26.2 uh, miles long, okay? And um, we are told that we need to use the information above to answer the questions that follow. So let's just quickly have a look at what is given to us here, right? So like I mentioned, we as, uh, like they mentioned, they said this is a road, uh, route map of Los Angeles Marathon, right? So this is basically um, the starting point. So you basically travel, 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 or you run, 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 run 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 um following this route until you reach the finish line okay right um yeah so let's have a look at the questions question 2.3.1 it says explain the meaning of a route map okay so guys a route map right is a map that shows um main roads um in a particular area or um the main routes or the direction used um for, for example for example by buses um trains and other forms of transport in a particular area okay but it's very important here when you look at this road map that is given to us right this road map um basically shows the direction that is used by people in this marathon okay so now when we have to basically give a meaning of what a road map is right you need to try to now get that this that definition in the context of what is happening um in the diagram or in the illustration that is given to you okay so you can just say that okay um a road map is a map that shows the direction or the path that runners will run um in, in this case in the los angeles marathon okay so we can just write that down okay so in this context we can say that a road map is a map that shows the direction or the path that the runners will run okay always try to um bring it in the context of the the diagram um that is given to you guys okay question 2.3.2 describe what is meant by map not to scale okay so let's see here right they give us this information here on our map right that says that this map is not to scale remember guys when you're analyzing your maps right you'll find that most of the time there's a scale there right that is usually indicated like i mentioned you'll either have like a bar scale a line scale number scale right in this case we're not given any scale um that is, is that can be used um to calculate let's say for example a distance from one point to another right so meaning that this map right is not to scale so what does that mean okay it basically means that if we were to basically think of it practically if you had to measure maybe the distance from there to there if you were to just uh, measure the distance as a crow would fly from this point to that point right on this map right and you got that distance for example to be equal to let's say 20 millimeters okay this measured distance on paper in no way right gives you information about the actual distance in real life meaning that there's actually no relationship between the measured distance um on this map and the actual distance um in real life okay there's no relationship because we are told that this map is not to scale okay 
So there is no relationship between the measured distance and the actual distance because no scale is given. So to describe what is meant by a map not to scale, you can just say that there is no relationship between the measured distance and the actual distance, okay? Because no scale is given, okay? Question 2.3.2, right? We can just say there is no, okay? So there is no relationship between the measured distance and the actual distance, all right? Or the actual distance, um, let's just add that um, on the ground, okay? Then let's have a look at question 2.3.3. The runners in the Los Angeles uh, Marathon have to pass underneath a bridge to certain points during the marathon, okay? So when runners are basically running in this marathon, right? They need to pass under a bridge at certain points, right, during the marathon. A says, explain how this is indicated on the map, okay? How do we know that here, yeah, this is actually a bridge? So if you were to follow this point here, what do we see? Do you see that this arrow is actually disappearing? under this road here okay so that basically shows that oh we've got a bridge there okay let's continue do you see it's disappearing again under this road there so that means that we've got a bridge there as well then we continue we continue they're running they're running it's disappearing again do you see under this road there that means that this is another bridge okay we continue we continue we continue we continue we continue oh it's disappearing again under that road there until we get to the finish line okay so what does this mean okay explain how is this indicated on the road how are the bridges indicated okay so you can just explain how they're indicated okay um the arrow goes below the road okay okay so when we see the arrow going below um the road or when the arrow disappears under the road then we know that we basically um looking or dealing with a bridge okay so we're going to basically write that down okay so the arrow goes below the road or the arrow disappears under the road okay that would be a, a valid reason okay let's have a look at question 2.3.3b write down the number of times that a runner who completes the marathon will pass under the bridge so i already explained um i showed you how many bridges um we have here guys right i explained that here right when you start off here right you go you go you go do you see that it's disappearing so that's the first bridge right so that's one okay then we go we go disappearing that's the second bridge two right then we go we go we go right the runner is going going that's disappearing there that's the third bridge okay then we continue to go and go and go and go right going and going and going right disappearing that's the fourth bridge okay then we go to the finish line and we're done so we can see that in total right how many times um how the, the a runner basically um passes a runner passes under the bridge four times okay so we're gonna basically write that down okay so runner passes the bridge or passes under the bridge four times in question 2.3.4 says write down the general direction in which the runner will face when they start in flower street okay so in this case it's very nice when they're talking about general direction guys you need to note that you need to make use of compass or any type of inf information that will give you um information on the compass right or where our north is okay and in this case we can see that our north is um that direction it's facing up right so what do we know now we can just use that naughty elephant sprays water right to help us get our general direction so it's naughty move in a clockwise direction naughty elephant sprays water okay so now they want you to determine what is the general direction okay um the general direction in which the runner runners will face when they start in flower street so where is flower street i'm just going to highlight flower street here's flower street do you see how flower street is actually positioned okay so now we're going to try to now draw that line in the same 
way parallel right um on our compass just to determine what the general direction is okay so like i showed you guys it's in that direction okay meaning that it's in that direction and the runners are going in that direction you guys don't say north north uh, northeast they're not going in the northeast direction right the line is situated in this direction if you were to draw it parallel to this line that i've just drawn here now right okay okay so if you were to basically move this line parallel to this um, line um that we have of flower street what do you see right that actually the general direction in which the runners will face when they start um in flower street is in the southwest direction do you see that it's in the southwest direction because they will be facing the southwest direction because they're heading that way okay when they run okay all right so it's in the southwest direction okay and that is basically what we're going to write it's not the northwest direction because they're not going to be facing that way okay they're not going to be going that way but they're going to be going in the southwest. And when you're giving these general di directions, guys, you need to remember you start with the south, then it's west, or you're south, then it's east, or it's north, then it's east, or it's north, then it's west. You don't say it's in the west south, eh, right? You start with your north and your south, and you give the other um, direction. That is also very important. Um, just try to also remember that. Okay, so um the general direction in which the runners will face when they start in flower street is the southeast direction okay south sorry guys i meant um southwest direction okay southwest direction okay because it's in between your south and your west not southeast okay okay so it's in the southwest direction all right and guys that is it for question um, two point uh, one uh, for question two, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. Um, where we basically had a look at our floor plan, right? We had a look at um our tree diagram, okay, and applied that or used our tree diagram to calculate probability, and we also had a look at our roadmap, okay. So I hope that I made everything straightforward and easy for you guys to understand. If you made it to um the end of the video tutorial guys please consider um subscribing to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet guys and also don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up right i would really really appreciate that and i'll see you guys on my next video tutorial in the next video tutorial guys we're going to be starting off with question um three and question three deals with measurements so we're going to be working with parameter we're going to be working with volume we're going to be working with density right so please make sure that you have clicked on your notification bells that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload a distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy Bye, guys.